Mr. Anwar, how um, much do you think the international outcry uh, has helped Marzi's prompt release? Do you think that the U.S. government realized that this is going to be very costly for them, considering protests that were arranged in different parts of the world and uh, many independent NGOs and uh, independent uh, news outlets that were speaking up for Marzi? I think that it certainly had some kind of negative effect. I, I, I do think that this made a very strong statement to the U.S. government that uh, this is going to be a bigger issue than you realize it's going to be. Now, the mainstream U.S. media didn't really bother to cover uh, Hashemi's abduction really all that well, maybe a, a cursory glance, but that's all. But I think that the amount of uh, people outside the mainstream, the number of NGOs, the number of organizations uh, that did come forward to make enough noise regarding this was perhaps more significant than they thought it was going to be. Now, they would have expected some noise, but I think the volume of this was a little bit more than say the U.S. government predicted that it was going to be, and this placed some pressure. It, it, it's hard to hold someone uh, in this situation who isn't charged with a crime, but you're essentially holding them in violation of the law. Now, if some kind of anti-terror law had been used or was uh, she was being suspected of some kind of you know, terrorist act or connection to terrorism or something like that, then it would have been very easy to hold her for a long time. But given that they expli eventually explicitly said that she was not being charged with a crime, then that gave the, the fuel necessary for much more public out outrage to have a greater foothold in the debate that was uh, probably going on. I think that the U.S. is you know, carrying out this investigation uh, merely to demonize Iran, uh, merely to uh, send a message that, that they are still going to cause complications for uh, that businesses in Iran, be they uh, press TV or you know, in other uh, industries. Uh, they're going to make things very difficult for people uh, domestically in the United States if they do what uh, Hashemi did and uh, very much uh, speak up against the crimes that were being committed against uh, many groups inside of the United States. And I think that it was wholly necessary to make as much noise as it was to let the, let the United States government know that if you do come after journalists in this way, if you do come after uh, news media personalities, those who are not in the big club, who are not part of the mainstream media elite, that there is going to be consequences of some kind. So uh, thankfully she has been released in this situation, but I, I think it's necessary in this situation to expand it much further if possible. I think that a lawsuit against the U.S. government for this abduction would be the right way to go, you know, try to uh, hit them in the pocketbooks, uh, take them to court, get things on record. Uh, but that's a very uh, long and expensive process, one that the average person is not uh, capable of going through. But I think that when you have a situation where someone who has a voice like this is essentially abducted by the U.S. government, things must be made as difficult for the U.S. government as possible to send them the message that this kind of behavior is not going to be tolerated in a civilized society. For a, a country that claims to be the beacon of freedom and democracy in the world, they certainly, uh, it certainly seems necessary to hold them to that claim because they, they're not see, it doesn't seem like they're willing to hold to that two of those beliefs by themselves. It's going to take at least uh, you know, some kind of a coercion on behalf of the victims of these violations and to use the system itself to remind the U.S. government that it will be held accountable for its crimes. Thank you very much.